I wanted to open this year of preaching with really God regarding Christ. And you'll see what I mean as we actually get into it. Let's start with uh, Genesis 1-1 and John chapter 1, verse 1. And look at that, and that really is how it starts. In the beginning, God. And in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. I've expressed to you before that Jesus Christ is the expression of God. Whenever God expressed himself, it was through the Word, Jesus Christ. And God spoke through his word at the beginning and throughout that Old Testament. Christ literally is on every page as you go through. And God was introducing his Messiah through the Old Testament. And you'll see that very clearly today. So God speaks of Christ. When God speaks, then there's an affirmation by Christ Jesus in the New Testament. And I want you to see that today. For the Lord is God, and he created the heavens and earth and put everything in place. Now I'm quoting Isaiah 45, verse 18. And then the affirmation that we see from Christ, and now in these final days he has spoken to us through his Son. God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son he created the universe. Isaiah, God is speaking of the fact that he created everything. In Hebrews, then we learn that everything was created through Christ, and that comes up in other places in the New Testament as well. You're saying, well, Dave, you're saying that Christ is affirming this, but you just quoted Hebrews. I just want to make a point. It's a subtle point, but it's like a ton of bricks that you have to understand hits you in the face. Whether I am quoting the red letters in the scripture, because somebody decided at one point, I'm going to take everything that Christ was quoted as saying, I'm going to put it in red letters. But the reality is, Everything in this Bible is the Word. It is the written Word of God. And it was given to us by the second person of the Trinity, the Christ, the Christos, which means Word of God, the expression of God. So God expressed himself to us through the written Word, and then, obviously, at Christmas time, which we just celebrated through the living word, Christ took on flesh and became a human being and walked among us to further reveal and give us an impression of who God is. But everything that is written in this book is affirmed by Jesus Christ. It is literally the word, the expression of God, which is the Christ. Now, continuing verse 18 of Isaiah chapter 45, he made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. And then from John chapter 10, verse 10, we read, the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. My purpose, Jesus is saying, is to give them a rich and satisfying life. God told us he wanted the world not to be a place of empty chaos, but to be a place where people could live. Jesus affirms that by saying, my purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Of course, the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. He does not want us to have that purposeful life. And then God, Isaiah 45, 18 again, ends, I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. Well, what does Jesus say? From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is a quote by Jesus to his disciples. When one of them said, well, how can we know the Father? And he responded, haven't I been with you long enough that you recognize? And then he said, from now on, you do know him. And have seen him. For if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Continuing. 
God speaks. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner. Christ, Mark 14, verse 49. Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there among you teaching every day. But these things are happening to fulfill what the scriptures say about me. This is an important point because many sects, S-E-C-T-S, or many cults, C-U-L-T-S, or offshoots of Christianity, um, you've heard of the Gnostic Gospels. Gnosis means secret. All right, if somebody is out there trying to hide something or keep it secret or telling you, come to my secret meeting, like, and as you graduate, you learn more and more. It's called gnosis, all right? But that's not who God is, and that's not how Christianity is taught. It's a big difference out there. God says, I publicly proclaim bold promises. Not keeping anything secret from you. I am publicly proclaiming who I am, what I have done, and what I will do. And he did. And Christ then, when he was in the temple, when they came to arrest him, why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there all day. Why did you wait to do it under the cover of darkness? You could have just come and got me. I haven't done anything in secret. I've done it out in the open. But man and the enemy, sinful man, more particular, and the enemy wants to do evil in the darkness because evil cannot stand the light. And the beauty of Christianity, it is done in the light. If anybody ever tells you, come here, I have a secret to tell you, and it's special knowledge, don't go <laughs> because they're obviously going to tell you something that has a problem with it. If it's straight up, Good stuff, wholesome, out in the open. But it's what people want to do in secret that cause problems. That's where evil dwells. That's not how God is. That is not how Christianity is. God goes on to say, I would not have told the people of Israel to seek me if I could not be found. And what does Jesus say? We sang it this morning. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. Old Testament, God said, I would not have told Israel to seek me if I couldn't be found. And Jesus in the New Testament says, seek the kingdom of God above all else. Obviously, he wants to provide that for us. And look at that. And live righteously and God will give you everything you need. What a great, great promise. The Lord God Almighty says, I, the Lord, speak only what is true and declare only what is right. Now, you know what's coming next. What did Jesus say? Jesus told them, him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you see how these scriptures are fulfilled? We talk about prophecy. That's what we're seeing. We're seeing God speaking in the Old Testament, and we're seeing the fulfillment in the New Testament. So God continues to speak. Isaiah 44, verses 6 and 7. I am the first and the last. There is no other God. Now you know what's coming here. Christ says, I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Revelation 22, verse 13. God says, who is like me? Let him step forward and prove to you his power. Let him do as I have done since ancient times when I established a people and explained its future. Isaiah 44, verse 7. Christ says, and he said, yes, it was written long ago that Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. I just love it. God proclaimed it. God, God prophesied it. 
through his prophets, and Christ fulfilled it. And Christ affirmed what God the Father said. Isaiah 44, verse 8. Do not tremble. Uh, do not be afraid. Did I not proclaim my purposes for you long ago? You are my witnesses. Is there any other God? Christ. Luke 24, verses 48 through 49. You are witnesses of all these things, and now I will send the Holy Spirit, just as my Father promised. And again, you have there the affirmation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, our triune God. So, we are Christ's ambassadors, Paul writes. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. And remember, look back across the, the column there. God said, Isaiah 44, 8, you are my witnesses. Paul writes, we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. Through who? His witnesses. Through us. We speak for Christ when we plead Come back to God, 2 Corinthians 5, 20. Isaiah 44, verses 9 and 11. How foolish are those who manufacture idols. They may all stand together, but they will stand in terror and shame. And then Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13. And God never said to any of the angels, Sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies, making them a footstool under your feet. Well, Dave, why did you put that in there? Why did you do that? Because there are some people, even to this day, and the reason Hebrews included it back in that time, there is a theology about angels, and some people get confused. They will take the created, just as many people have taken different things that they see out in the world and carved them into idols or today put them in their mind as an idol look at angelology in the same way and they might want to worship angels no don't do that how foolish are those who manufacture idols there's one god there's only one god and that is whom we worship Hebrews, the writer wanted to make sure that people understood God is far and above any angel. Christ is far and above any angel. They were created by God to be his messengers. They are his servants, period. They are not to be worshipped. God speaks, Isaiah 42, verse 1. Look at my servant whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. Christ's affirmation, Luke 9, 35. Then a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, my chosen one, listen to him. Actually, God speaking in the New Testament, putting his seal of approval, if you will, upon Christ. Are you, and you, excuse me, and you will be a light to guide the nations, Isaiah 42, 6. Jesus' words, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 8, verse 12. Christ does not go into the darkness other than to set us free. And he does that by shedding the light and the darkness is expelled. Again, don't go into the dark places. That's where evil occurs. That is not where the light is. The light expels all darkness. God said, you will open the eyes of the blind. You will free the captives, captives from prison, releasing those who sit in dark dungeons. Isaiah 42, 7. Jesus says, when John had questioned, he was in prison. He didn't know what was going on. John the Baptist I'm referring to. John says, go out and ask him if he's the Messiah. Here's Christ's response. Go back to John and tell him what you have heard and seen. The blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life. Echoing 
the prophecy in Isaiah 42, 7, being answered in Matthew chapter 11, verses 4 and 5. God speaks, Isaiah 42, 8 and 9. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true, and now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. Christ. Then he said, when I was with you before, I told you that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, Luke 22, 44 through 45. This is after his resurrection. And he is walking with two believers. And they do not recognize him. They're wondering, who is this one? And they say, haven't you heard? Haven't you heard what's been going on? And then he opens up, Jesus does, the scriptures to them. And then he goes in and he breaks bread with them, remember? And as soon as he does that, he opens their eyes. And then in his resurrected body, he's gone. Later to appear to all the disciples. God speaks, Isaiah 59, 20 through 21. The Redeemer will come to Jerusalem to buy back those in Israel who have turned from their sins, says the Lord. And this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit will not leave them, and neither will these words I have given you. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 15. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die. And only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Christ came to conquer death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. If you accept what Jesus Christ has done for you, and you accept him as your Savior, you acknowledge your need for a Savior, that there is no way to be reunited back with God except through him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. You will be saved. Amen? God speaks, Isaiah 42, verse 6. I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you, and I will give you to my people Israel as a symbol of my covenant with them, and you will be a light to guide the nations. Isn't it amazing how many times in the Old Testament God uses the fact that he is the light he is the light for the whole world. He is the light for the nations. Christ affirms this, Luke 24, 46 through 48. Yes, it was written long ago that the Messiah would suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all the nations beginning in Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sins for all who repent. You are witnesses of all these things. Saying this to his disciples, this is part of the Great Commission. Will we be part of the Great Commission? Will we be his ambassadors in 2018? Will we do exactly what he is saying? His name to all the nations? supposed to be proclaimed beginning in Jerusalem? Well, then he wants us to go beyond Jerusalem. I don't know about you, but I don't live in Jerusalem. But God has visited my heart, and he has changed it. I have accepted Jesus as my Savior. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord. His Holy Spirit lives in me. His Holy Spirit empowers me and guides me to be and live the Christian life. And with that, 
I am to tell others about that life. I am to grow and become more and more like Christ. The best way I know of to become more and more like Christ is to have a life of devotion, a life of discipleship, but I need a source document to help guide me. Oh, God provided it. It's exciting to be a Christian. It's exciting to know the truth. That is something that is amazing. In our world today, to make that statement that you can know the truth, that it's exciting to know the truth, we can. How many in the world can say that? No, they're all saying, oh, there's this truth or that truth or there's your own truth. No, that's poppycock. There is one truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And if we want to follow God, if we want a relationship with God, there's only way to get one, and that's to go through the way, which is Jesus. There's one way to God, and that's through the Son. Amen.